This half hour on CBS This Morning Saturday, we're serving up a very special dish. This year marks the 30th anniversary of a unique cooking school that's been responsible for nurturing many of this country's top chefs. To see how they do it, we recently took a little trip to Soho in downtown Manhattan and visited that school, the International Culinary Center. Very nice looking plate. Six months, total immersion, turns you out and you're ready to go into a good kitchen. It's a simple recipe for success. I say to everyone, no one's here to go to school. Everyone's here to get a job. That Dorothy Can Hamilton came up with 30 years ago. Inspired by a meal at a vocational school in Paris, mm -hmm. she started the French Culinary Institute from scratch. I think it was my generation back in 1984. It's when Alice Waters and Jeremiah Tower and Julia Child was around. And she came into this school the first week we were open. And she became my fairy godmother. And she said, Dorothy, you have to join the American Institute of Wine and Food. Dorothy, you have to meet uh, Jacques Pepin. And she was just so excited that um, we were opening a school to teach French classic technique. And it's the technique married with the product that gives you brilliance on the plate. The first graduating class had just 11 students, including one standout. He was a bad boy. You know, Bobby was voted least likely to succeed. Before becoming one of the most well-known chefs in the world, Bobby Flay was a high school dropout working in a New York restaurant. And Joe Allen, the owner of the, you know, those restaurants, had a knew someone in Paris and said, where should I send this kid to school? And they said, if he doesn't speak French, you better send him over to the French Culinary Institute. It's opening up, and we, we think it's going to be a good school. The program has graduated 15,000 chefs over the past three decades, including culinary leaders like David Chang at Momofuku and Dan Barber at Blue Hill at Stone Barns. You're all going to Italy? So, buongiorno. Three years ago, the school was renamed to International Culinary Center, or ICC, reflecting the new programs in Italian and Spanish cuisine. It's a real gift to be an educator because you change people's lives. We are thrilled to be here at the ICC with three former graduates as well as a dean of the school. Wally Dufresne is widely credited with championing the molecular gastronomy movement. His new restaurant is called Alder. Michael Cherno is co-owner of New York's The Meatball Shop Restaurants. His story is so good, CBS recently optioned it for a sitcom. Daisy Martinez has had shows on the Food Network and PBS. She graduated from ICC in 1999 and came back to complete the sommelier program in 2012. And chocolatier Jacques Torres is known as Mr. Chocolate. Around here, he's also Dean of Pastry Arts. I know enough to start with a faculty member in this discussion. <laughs> you joined the faculty in 1993. Yes. What is it's been it? a while now. <laughs> what is it that's so special about this place? Um, this place is in the middle of New York City with extremely good professional teachers. It's, it's a very serious school and it's a total immersion into cooking six months of just cooking. I did, a, I did what we call an apprenticeship mm -hmm. in France. An apprenticeship is two years long. We teach at this school at ICC in six months more than what I learned in two years. Anthony and I have this privileged view that we see and talk to so many chefs every week, and we do meet a lot that are self-taught. So what do you think is the difference, especially in today's day and age, between someone who has this classic training and someone who's self-taught? Ooh, 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 me. <laughs> Go ahead. I love this question because the school taught me a gazillion things. But the one thing that, that made a huge impression is that whether we're cooking for six or 6,000, you need to be organized in the kitchen. And the chef instructors crack a whip you know, over here in as much as your workspace and the choreography of getting that dish out. So organization, that to me was first and foremost. Is it mandatory that you go to culinary school? I don't think it is, but there's a great efficiency to the, to the program here. So I think that's the important thing is that when you leave here, you're ready to enter the workforce. You have the vocabulary. You have the basic skill set that you are ready to build on. Has, has much changed in the, in the 20 years you've been here? In, in a lot. What's changing? It was very... Um, very strict. Uh, French cooking was French cooking. French pastry was very, very strict. Today, you see a lot of culture mixing together. Right. Uh, technology changed a lot also. 
Today, I think chefs are not afraid to mix, uh, to, take, to, to get influenced by a trip that they take to, to Japan or to any other country, bring some techniques back, bring some ingredients back, and mix all those things together. Where did that change come from? Did that change come from the students or from, from, from guys like you? I think he's one of the troublemakers that makes things change. <laughs> You're, you're not the first to say that. <laughs> so you, in a sense, have demanded it. Well, no, I mean, you know, I think that uh, school, uh, cooking, cooking and technology have always had a very important and, and vital relationship. I mean, you think about all the major technological advances, uh, refrigeration, you know, microwaves, food processors, all those things, ovens, you know, the ability to control flame, all of these things are right on the forefront of of life in the kitchen. For most people, molecular gastronomy is still so new. And I think of someone that comes to a school that is French immersion. How did you go from what you learned here to where you are now? You know, I mean, the, the, our style of cooking is about asking questions, looking for answers to questions. And, um, you know, it, it, I think it begins and ends in many ways with the classics, with the foundation. So for us, we're just building on the knowledge that we began to learn here at the school. Well, Daisy, you actually came back for more. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that girl. <laughs> <laughs> and recently, you finished in 2012, right? I did, yeah, yeah. I was in the charter class of the sommelier certification, and it was, I mean, I've passed easier kidney stones than that course. <laughs> First of all, you start drinking at 9 o'clock. And I was like, okay, this is not going to work. This is just not going to work. By the time that they served lunch, I was like, <laughs> how do I get to the line? But the fact that I had gone through the culinary program gave me a huge advantage in the class. But, you know, you process in the kitchen, and the guys would tell you the same thing. You process your cooking style through your nature, like the playfulness of, of, uh, of Chef Jacques, and, and almost the tongue-in-cheek humor of, of Wiley, and, you know, the whole sexiness thing of, of his meatball shop, you know? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, that's what you, right? I mean, you process from your own frame of reference. So all of that, all of that happens in the kitchen. Michael, did you have a cooking background before you came here? So I, uh, I've worked in restaurants since I was about 13 years old. Probably not legally, but I did. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I, I've always had a dream and a passion to own a restaurant. But you needed, you needed a credential you needed a credential that this place offered. I needed to know what, what they were doing in there in order to, to, to own a restaurant, and that's what I did. I came here, I learned a lot. I took the culinary program, I took the restaurant management program, and I went out and opened up a restaurant. Have you noticed a difference in the students? I think that maybe students are a little bit more excited about the profession. It, it's, it's more cool today to become a chef. I think the industry is going through a real sort of transition, revolution maybe, you know. Um, you're seeing a lot more um, younger generations, the millennials, right, um, really aspiring to be in the kitchen today. But you know, you don't leave here a chef. You graduate. The education that you walk out of here with is, is incredible. But if I went to Jacques um, as a culinary school graduate and I said, hey, I want to be the chef of your, uh, <laughs> of your pastry shop, um, Jacques would say, how about we start with a mop? Yeah. <laughs> the dance yeah. of the mob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it, you, 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 you come here and you learn, and it's incredible, and you learn an enormous amount in a, in a, in a really, in a short period of time, which right. is amazing, but you can't walk out of here expecting to be a top-notch chef. Thank you all. Wiley Dufresne, Michael Chernow, Daisy Martinez, Jacques Torres, thanks all Merci. for being here. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.